In this part of the lecture, we want to talk about experimental methods. The engine of scientific progress is based on theory and empirics. We've seen this already in an earlier lecture. Theory and empirics benefit from one another. There's a constant progress and interaction between both disciplines. Theory derives predictions based on assumptions. It helps us to organize our knowledge and it identifies gaps and develops questions which can then be answered empirically. On the other hand, empirics helps us or gives us an opportunity to test our theoretical predictions and the observations made in the field can then influence our theoretical models, for example, by influencing the assumptions made in theory. When talking about empirics, there are different categories of empirical research. And one important category of empirical research is experimental research. Experiments complement other empirical methods. Let us first talk about different data types. We want to talk about happenstance data. Happenstance data is a byproduct of an uncontrolled process. So most of the data we, we, we gather is happenstance data. We also have experimental data. Experimental data is deliberately created under controlled conditions. So here we basically design the observation environment. So this is an important differentiation between happenstance and experimental data. And you can also distinguish between laboratory data and field data. Laboratory data is gathered in an artificial environment. On the other hand, field data is gathered in a natural occurring environment. There are all four possible combinations of happenstance, and happenstance, experimental field, and lab data. So I want to give you an example for, for all combinations. For example, there's happenstance field data. If you receive sales numbers, for example, this is typically happenstance field data. You make an observation in the field, but it's not in a controlled environment. There's also field experimental data. There are plenty of um, field experiments ran in the last years. For example, one typical test is um, you, can, you can play around with default options. Uh, Google, for example, can play around with the screens you see, uh, the way in which um, ads are presented. This is a field setting, but it's experimentally created. There are also instances where you have lab happenstance data. Some people claim that the discovery of penicillin was, it was obviously made in a lab, but it was not uh, a deliberate process, but it was uh, by, by chance. So lab happenstance data also exists. And most of this lecture was considering lab experimental data. So for example, the observations we made in the ultimatum game, these were lab experimental data. Happenstance data cannot answer important questions. With happenstance data, the problem is that we do not really have a controlled environment, which leads to the problem that we often cannot distinguish between causality and correlation. And we want to see this in, or want to better understand this in, in an example. Suppose there are two business schools, A and B. 
Graduates from A, the more prestigious school, earn an average salary of $150,000 after graduation. On the other hand, the graduates of B only earn $120,000 after graduation. The question now is, or the question we are interested in is, which of the schools is better? The, there are several possible explanations. One explanation, and this is the one which was advocated by the president of Business School A. He says, well, our school provides better teaching, so better education. On the other hand, the president of Business School B, he could argue that A attracts better students. So what we observe is a mere selection effect. With happenstance data, we cannot really tell who's right. The two explanatory variables, school characteristics and student characteristics, are completely confounded. I try to illustrate it in this picture. So here we have business school A. Business school A has a certain type of students and a certain type of education. And here, business school B also has a certain type of students and a certain type of education. We know that these students are, in the end, more successful, reach higher salaries. But we do not know if this is because they are, let's say, the better students, or if the education, the stuff that the business school provides is better. So here you can see with just happenstance data, we have a problem. What we need to do is we need to distinguish the impact of the schools from the student characteristics. And this is why we often need to run experiments. So where we can control the different impact factors and can distinguish between causality and correlation. Let us end this introduction with a quote from Friedman and Sander, who say, history suggests that a discipline becomes experimental when innovators develop techniques for conducting relevant experiments. <laughs>